Okay, uh, so I've got my steel here on my workbench, and <clears throat> it's really important to check out what you've got. Uh, at first glance, you know, still need to lay it out straight, but just trying to get an idea of how this is going to sit on here. It's really important you check out the steel that uh, you get. And mine, I'm glad I, I ordered uh, four eight-foot sections. And I'm really glad I ordered four because uh, each one kind of has its own personality. Um, where they cut it at the shop, it's great. It's, uh, you can see in here, it's, you know, it's straight, there's no bends, there's no crush or pinch points. Uh, I do have a little bit of like surface rust that'll come right off of some sandpaper, but um, from where the uh, shrink wrap or plastic wrap was holding it together. Um, but for the most part, they, you know, it's good. And, but you know, with the eight foot section, things can happen. So I've got, you know, this is a straight edge. It looks really good. Uh, and I was standing here just sort of like looking at it. And I noticed, I don't know if you can see it, but there's it's a pinch point right here. And you can kind of see it goes in. And really it looks like it hit right about there. So it actually goes in and comes back out. It's not a big thing, but you know, these are the frame rails and they're gonna be visible. So let's see here. Take my straight edge, and if I go over here to where this pinch point is, you can pretty clearly see uh, daylight through there. Um, yeah, it's not great. Uh, so yeah, um, again, over here, looks pretty good. There's a tiny bit of daylight. This isn't a perfectly straight edge, but you get the idea. Um, so I'm gonna have to select a different piece for that frame rail, I think. Um, that's definitely gonna be a weak point. And these things are so, so, so overbuilt, but there's no point in starting out with, uh, built-in weak point when you don't need to. So make sure, oh yeah, and the other issue was uh, over here, this is I think from the delivery, they cut it for me, but this is really bad. I think you can see the pinch there on the left. So <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just, it's but this part doesn't matter so much because uh, I'm going to be trimming here and then uh, I'll be bending this down to make the angled frame rail. So uh, I think all but this one piece uh, actually is pinched on one end. So um, yeah, I guess uh, these will be the front parts and on the other ones uh, I'll just have to trim around it. So make sure you check out your steel before you get going on this. Okay, I'm showing 55 on the tape. I think it's three inches, so. Something like that. That feels pretty comfortable. I'm not hitting. I've got about an inch on either side. Right about there, probably. Um, that's pretty tight, but it's not crazy tight. So this is the intimidating part of the project where you have made your marks on your welding surface and you've laid it out and you've clamped everything in place and now you got to go cut some steel and tack weld it in place and things become much more expensive as we go along but every journey starts with a footstep 
So I have been working on the horn on the frame curve at the front. So that is the frame rail in theory. And there's the wheel. And there is the canvas. So we have that. And I think that's just about everything. But what I'm working on right now is the this light blue sketch here that's behind everything. So you can see the uh, frame rail here. I know that this is three inches, so uh, get this on here. This is not quite the right size. There we go. So what I've done is I've traced my frame horn. Oops, no, this isn't right. This is one too big. There we go. There we go. So there's the frame horn. And I've got some key measurements there. And I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to transfer the pattern to a piece of a larger tag board and then I'm going to trace that onto the middle. Yeah, but the, there you get your uh, whatchamacallit and I've checked and this is uh, you know larger than the three inch so I'm actually gonna have to fabricate uh, that piece. Shouldn't be a problem. This is a should be able to cut that out of a piece of a uh, one inch bar stock. Uh, no problem. So get to it. All right, uh, getting ready to do some patterns for the frame horns at the front. Just uh, trace this out on the monitor and now I'm tracing it out on, uh, what is this, poster board. So, almost done with that, cut that out, and then transfer it to the steel. So, it's hard to see here, but there's a uh, taper on, this is the flat side, the top of the rail. The bottom side has a taper to it. And so, I measured from a point on the taper on the template out to where it meets up with the rail. So that's what I've done here. Uh, and... It's 12.4 inches from this point to this point. And we'll just go ahead and mark that real quick. So let's see here. All right. And then if we take this guy off, should have, if I don't hit everything in the shop. So there's my template with the overhang. And then I measured from uh, measured from this point out to this point. And that gave me a really nice taper for my template that I'll be able to transfer over to the steel over here. So looking forward to that. All right, and we've got the pattern traced. It's our outside right, and it follows the curve. And then we'll have an extension that comes out mm, three quarters of an inch or so. And yeah, uh, I scribed all the way around. I have to make sure that my patterns match up on both sides. I think I'm within, I'm within a millimeter or so, which I think is pretty good for a go-kart. But uh, yeah, there we go. Just goes right up, down. I think that'll work out quite nicely. So pattern done, and now we cut. All right, we are taking a break because doing this with battery-powered grinder is ill-advised. 
uh, use up a lot of battery, turns out. Got lighting solution here. Uh, slowly but surely cutting through here. And let's see. Got this portion cut out here. So that's starting to look pretty good. We'll get uh, the batteries charged up, get the other side cut out. And then, uh, yeah, and then this part will have to be fabricated down here, but finally it's getting some progress on this. And then we can use a drill press, get some holes drilled for our rear axle and uh, start fabricating the cross members, which I think the cross member is going to go about here, which means I'm going to have to actually trim up my one by three uh, so that it fits here okay. But that's not a problem, that's just something to work on. All right, we have one main piece cut out. Curve is starting to come together. I'll have to pull this piece out next, but that was, uh, I would call that successful. Got this piece. go. So this will be the top and then this will curve down. There'll be a uh, half inch extension there. And yeah, that should look pretty good, I think, once uh, I fill this in. I've got a piece of uh, bar stock over here. So this will get just one inch bar stock. It'll get welded in right like, right like that. And then, uh, let's see here. Yeah, like that, more or less. And then uh, I'll have to get another piece of bar stock and curve it around to match that curve. But yeah, that's a really good start. Let's see here, here we go. Nice. I think that this is large enough that if I cut it about there, I can use this as the, uh, the support for when I cut through the back side of uh, the back side of this, I'll have to notch that uh, to let the axle through. And well, we'll see. I don't think we'll figure that out. But yeah, very pleased. Um, it's coming together. Okay, and that part is done. So that's what that looks like. This is what these look like. Got a nice profile to them. Looks like they match pretty close. You know, it looks like half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter at the worst spots. Cool, okay, I'm happy with that. And then flip them over. Let me get an idea. Still need to trim this part off, but yeah, looks kind of cool. Got a little bit of a taper to them, just like the uh, ballot does. So that's a good start. And uh, I went ahead and marked on here, this is the center of the, uh, where the, piece will go like that sort of and yeah I'm gonna have to clearance it 
not clearance it, but trim it down so it fits because it's no longer three inches tall there. It's only two on the wide side. And then right now I'm figuring out where, uh, so this is 64 inches. It's off by a half inch, but that's okay. So let's see. This is 64 inches here. So that is my, I don't have this far enough apart, but that in theory is the ideal wheelbase is from this bit here to right there. And I'm still deciding if that's far enough apart. So next I need to go unwrap the engine plate and uh, do some more eyeballing and thinking. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, these came bent. I think I mentioned this before, but uh, another good reason to kind of trim along here gets rid of most of that bend. So, yeah, not great, but I'll be able to fix that. I think once I get it trimmed out, so, yeah, need to uh, decide on my wheelbase, and I'll be back. Okay, uh, got the frame mocked up here. I'm still trying to decide. I've decided where the forward uh, crossbar is going to go. It's going to go directly over where the axle ought to sit, plus or minus half an inch. Uh, and then... That effectively sets the wheelbase, and then follow the tape measure back to 64 inches, and that gets us the axle. Um, this bar, I think, represents where the back crossbar is going to go. And then, oh, I think you can actually bump this back a tiny bit, maybe another inch. Um, and then I've got... One that'll go here. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah, it'll go here-ish, and then we'll probably move the motor and the motor mount forward to sit on that. And then there'll be another one back here, and we'll cut off, I don't know, four or six inches of frame when I feel like it. Um, yeah, so the other thing I'm trying to decide on is... A lot of people sit the engine, uh, they put cross pieces straight across and then sort of create a platform and then the engine sits on the platform. Um, this sits on 17 inch rims with another three inches of rubber, something like that. Pretty, pretty beefy. So there's no reason to put the engine so high because your butt is gonna be four inches below the surface of the wood here, which gives you, uh, in theory, you know, you could put the cross beams, at least for the engine mount, uh, mounted to the bottom of this, which would get the engine down. And it's, it's pretty, pretty beefy. It's, I don't know, 15, no, it's at least 20, 25 pounds probably for that engine. Uh, and then you fill it up with a quart of oil and uh, attach the torque converter and the chain and uh, probably maybe a starter, a billet starter uh, flywheel. Um, it adds up. So thinking that uh, if I can have it mount here, that would be great um, for weight and then I'm going to move it forward also for weight because the driver sits here and then there's really hardly any weight on the front end of the, the cart. So I've seen a couple people put a gas tank up front because you've actually got a, a gas pump, a uh, fuel pump on this guy, which allows you to relocate the fuel to the front of the car, giving you another uh, couple pounds. The whole thing only weighs 250 pounds, so... Every pound you can move forward is a big change in weight distribution. 
so not that it really matters, but uh, if you can keep an eye on it, it doesn't hurt. So yeah, um, this is one inch wide steel plate, ribbon, whatever you want to call it. So that's about right. And I think this is like a two and a quarter inch tubing or something, but that gives a pretty good idea of what what we'll be, we'll be doing there. You can see I've got the curve cut here. Still need to do the upper part, but it's easier to clamp it for welding uh, when that hasn't been cut. So I'll work on that later. That's it for now. Thanks. Okay, and we are cutting the hole out for, let's see if I can do this here, there we go. Cutting the hole out and going pretty good. I'm using a, let's see if I can focus on that, one and a half inch, which is also, it says uh, 38 millimeter. And so this will be the inside and the, yeah, uh, the axle will go through here. I'll end up cutting, I believe, uh, up here so that I can drop the axle in and then I'll have to reinforce that. But it's the first start. And the other thing I did is, um, this has got a pilot hole drill on the end. I went ahead and just pushed it all the way through so that uh, when I flip this over, I've got a larger one here and this is a I hope this is the right one it's two and one eighth and uh, so I'll just replace this piece um, here I'll pop this one on it's got a uh, adapter of some sort those two black holes match up with what's on the bottom there uh, we'll swap this in put it in flip this over and then uh, keep going and I've already done this side as well on the other. This looks like the uh, the right rail. So halfway done, uh, no issues. I used olive oil. I just put some olive oil on there and uh, it seemed to work okay. Uh, you can use machine oil, but anything to give you some sort of lubrication is better than nothing. And uh, what am I on? I think I cut this thing at, it goes down to 760, but I'm actually on uh, what is that? Center, center is 1600. I think they prefer something like 600 RPM. So I might, I might move back a little bit, but this worked okay at 1630. So this is like a, I don't know what this is, this is like $80 drill press. It feels really flimsy when you pull it out, but, uh, I just needed it to drill four holes and probably some other five eighths holes as I get into the suspension and bolting things in, but this has been a good, eh, it's been an okay purchase. It's kind of wobbly, but uh, for my purposes, it's good enough. So that's all for now. So I read the instructions on the back here and it says for mild steel, uh, 160 RPM. So it's running roughly 10 times the RPM, so I switched it down to 760 bottom and bottom, and we'll see how that goes. So we're all lined up here. Cool. And kick it on. Got my safety glasses on, and this makes a horrific screeching noise. Getting there, about a quarter of the way through. 
All right, and that's one down. One to go. Okay, honestly, I couldn't tell the difference between the 1600 and the 750, but still going way too fast according to the numbers, but uh, we got through there. And uh, yeah, so let's do number two or number four, depending on how you're counting. This is the, what is this, a two and one eighth or 45 millimeter. So, and I'm wearing my eye protection. there to get that oiled and then uh, we'll continue on. Uh, as a side note, I haven't been super happy with the chuck. Uh, probably doesn't help with all the vibration, but I've been having to tighten that pretty regularly. Okay, and we've got all four holes. Uh, I'm not sure I like this. I bought the three hole thinking it would be more sturdy, but uh, that's going to be a problem. So that needs to be through bolted through steel and you would actually be, that'd be in the air. And if you put it down here, uh, you're impacting the structural whatever. So it lines up, but they also make one that's just two bolts, uh, which is probably a better option. So I'm going to have to order different ones. And then these bearings just drop right in and yeah. So, all right, well, we've got people coming over, so I've been informed I've got to wrap this up. That's how that works.